Oh, we've been looking forward to this show for a long time. The rookie previews on today's episode, quarterbacks and running backs. We break it all down. Do not miss a minute. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, oh, welcome in. Tuesday, April 2nd, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike, the Fantasy Hitman Wright, is here. Yep. Jason Moore, he made it in. What a do. I'm Andy Holloway. We're jumping into rookie previews. On the show today, quarterbacks, running backs, getting you ready for the draft, which is oh, man. just 23 days away. This is one of the most fun times of the year for me. The pre-NFL draft, talking about incoming rookies before they've got landing spots. I, I, I really enjoy it. I like learning the new players and teaching the new players. Teaching that's what we're doing. Our here. listeners yes. oh. about them. Yes, exactly. I see. They don't I attend a class where you're a professor. They're here now. It sounded very much like you were I thought all the them. rookies showed up at like a special place in time. Right, and, Jason, and I teach them how, everything. Fantasy value? Yes. How to it. produce? You need to catch the ball, okay? I don't care <laughs> what your coach says. You go in there and you tell them, I need to catch the ball. If you're running back and you don't have good hands, you get good hands. That's right. I mean, that's what their coaches should be saying. You never coached Jordan Howard the way you should have. <laughs> uh, 23 days until the NFL draft. We have really big things planned. I will leave it at that. We're going to have a lot of fun with the NFL draft as it pertains to fantasy football. And you can check out our pride and joy, the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. That includes our tier-based rankings, all of our premium stat projections. It'll include over 100 video player profiles, uh, cheat sheets, sleepers, breakouts, busts, and values, all of that stuff. And if you get the UDK+, Plus, uh, you also enjoy the Dynasty Pass, as well as the Draft Analyzer. So once you do draft, we will break down your team, give it a grade, strengths and weaknesses, and we include the Ultimate DFS Pass as well if you play any DFS. So... All of that you can check out at ultimatedraftkit.com. I encourage you to do it now, not later, because pre-order pricing will end when it comes out. On and it June gives 1st. you more time to uh, check out all these rookies even before the NFL draft. Uh, all right, Instagram question for our quick question of the day. Dave writes in and says, with so many free agent shakeups, how do you even go about trying to decide who will be relevant this year? So Dave is feeling the uh, the swirl. A lot of players went into the uh, this year the, was wild. Went into the the dryer and they got all mixed up and came out with different jerseys. Yeah, and uh, some of the it turns out someone put a red shirt in the wash. So now all these players come out with different color with pink shirts. Yeah, with pink shirts on. Um, I mean the the you know how do we try to go about deciding who will be relevant this year? The try to go about the process, if that's what the question is. You know, we, we, we've talked about this every year, but it's really we, for for the Ultimate Draft Kit, we stat these guys out. We wait until after the draft is done, the free agency shakeup has happened, and then we go team by team and actually try to look at every depth chart, uh, history, coaching, uh, you know, change and coaching history, and then we stat out the entire team front to back, players who aren't going to be drafted and players who are, and then it kind of... It's nice because in the end of that, it takes a lot of bias out. Well, like this time of year, we have we've got a lot of experience, we've got a lot of history to like make our calculated, you know, guesses, uh, you know, hypothesize who's going to be best. But then it really formulates into a much more solidified ranking that even surprises ourselves sometimes when we go through that process. That's so I, I would say, how do we go about trying to decide who will be relevant? Stat out every single player in the NFL. You begin the offseason with a laundry list, page after page of questions, and you get answers throughout the free agent period. You get answers 
uh, in terms of what kind of money is invested. Players that are extended, like their contracts. I We've been joking about my dynasty team that is <laughs> old, right? But you get answers, like Tyler Lockett getting reworked to extend him. Uh, Raheem Mostert recently reworked deal to give him an extra year. Mike Evans coming back. Like There are answers to be found in the ways teams spend money. They also kind of illustrate what their plans are for the draft if they bring certain players back. So it's a process. Like Jason said, you don't decide on April 1st or April 2nd who's relevant. You get the clues and you wait for the draft and then you continue to stat out those players like Jason said. So um, anything to add, Mike? Nope. That covered it. <laughs> Nor is he interested to add anything. No, there's, there's, no you I can nope, nope. I can nope. talk to talk, but I have nothing to add there. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Can we move on though? Nope. Oh I no. <laughs> News and notes from around the league. Well, I just mentioned it, but the Dolphins signed Raheem Moser to what amounts to a one year contract extension. But that puts him under contract through twenty twenty five. Apparently he's ageless. Uh, so he will be 32. It would have been his last year on the current deal. And so they gave him an extra year. And he will be very fantasy relevant for fantasy football. And he'll be a good value because he is so old and he's not the new hotness. Devon A. Chan will uh, take more work away. And so people don't want to be holding the, the bag on the old running backs, but he will be absolutely fine this year I, I to think be clear he was the old hotness last year yes yes he was and he, he but my point is like he'll be a value in drafts this year for sure he he should be drafted higher than wherever he is being drafted mike i want to get your reaction jeremy fowler reporting the cowboys and zeke mutual <laughs> interest in a return <laughs> are you interested are, do you join them in this interest no no i do not uh i mean i guess you, for fantasy football you have to you know, Rico Dowdle will be back, and if the if the room is Dowdle and Ezekiel Elliott, then we're gonna have some mucky muck to wade through because uh, Zeke he had a couple games there at the end of last year where he was relevant, as basically because he was everything for the for the New England Patriots, but like the the advanced stats, at least that I've seen on Zeke, you know, from last year, they match up with with what you saw was. It this is an older running back. Best. Yeah, this is an older running back who is not anywhere close to the sensation that when he was drafted. But if he's on the Cowboys again with Dowdle, tremendous offense, going to score a bunch of touchdowns. So you should have interest there. But it feels like he would he would shape up to be a, like a dead zone running back, and that's the, the your probability is not great. There, there was a little bit of mutual interest even last year before Zeke found a landing spot. It came out like, oh, they're not opposed to bringing him back, and they didn't. I would expect, and of course this is when the breaking news is going to happen that they just immediately sign him, <laughs> but I would expect them to wait until after the draft, see how that goes, because right now the expectation is they're going to get their starting running back in the draft. He may want to wait as well, guaranteed playing time and things like that. We are recording this episode of the podcast uh in the afternoon of April 1st. Uh, but the latest information we have here is Rashi Rice. That situation, I'm, I'm mentioning when we're recording in case more information comes out. Right. But the Dallas Morning News reporting that Rashi Rice is wanted in connection with a major car accident. There's all this video out there now uh, showing this uh, multi-car free, uh, free freeway, yeah. freeway pile up. And Rashi Rice is wanted in connection with that accident. We don't know anything else. We don't know if he was driving. Uh, all we know is that one of the vehicles involved that I believe fled the scene was leased or licensed to Rashi Rice. Yep. TBD, not good. Not, I mean, it's yeah. not a story you want to hear. No. no. It, there's Again, there's not a ton we can report on here, but it's it's a bad look. It's a, it's a really, really bad look right now. And it could end up being a very significant situation. Yeah, it could. So you you need to be aware of that. But um, we don't know much more than what's being reported yep. as of right now. Um, Any other big news to report? No, sir. Over there? No? Okay. 
Let's do it. Hey, rookie. Welcome to the NFL. All right, it is time to preview the 2024 rookie class. Today we're going to focus on the quarterbacks and the running backs. Uh, we will cover the wide receivers and tight ends on the Thursday episode. We will also have some draft predictions on that show. And uh, this is kind of an overview. This is a, a look into the a higher level. Yeah, yeah, the things that we liked about these players in the scouting process, things we didn't like fantasy implications and thoughts maybe we'll meander down the draft order a little bit with some of these guys and where we think they could land but um starting at the quarterback position you have teams with major needs obviously chicago with the first pick in the draft they just got rid of their quarterback we know what they're doing but washington at two new england at three minnesota um i believe they pick denver, at 11 right denver denver's at 12 and then las vegas is in the mix to move up or or pursue a quarterback because they have Gardner right now and Aiden O'Connell. So those are the premium destinations in terms of need. Doesn't mean it's the best place for these players to arrive. But yeah, this is going to be more of an overview. And if you really like you're so thirsty and you want to dig in deep and you want to go in depth on every one of these players to a much greater degree, all of these prospects have been previewed on the Dynasty podcast. And so you can check that out. And then obviously the Dynasty Pass itself, which is part of the Ultimate Draft Kit, has production profiles, rookie mock drafts, risers and fallers, and more detailed information on the site as well. But we'll start with the man of the hour, Caleb Williams, undoubtedly the number one pick in the upcoming draft. Um, he was a junior at USC when he declared, had a much better sophomore season statistically than his junior year frequently made the sports center type of plays. Uh, didn't throw a lot of interceptions. Nope. Very evasive in terms of extending plays. Um, great arm. What were your impressions on Caleb Williams? And, and let's translate that into how you think he might make an impact in year one and moving forward. Uh, I guess I'll jump in. I mean, he looks like a pro ready quarterback is kind of just, the easiest analysis to give him. He's going to be the first overall pick. And I had, uh, if you've been listening to the Dynasty Pod, and I'm talking about these quarterbacks, you know, I've been kind of hesitant to be really ready for Caleb Williams for fantasy purposes because I'm still going to. For year one or in yes, general? For or? year one. Because I'm, st I'm still going to bet against rookie quarterbacks. I know CJ Stroud was incredible, but I, we'll see. I, like, I would need, I would need more of those true uh, guys to have a breakout for me to be more in. But the Keenan Allen trade really changed how I'm thinking about Caleb Williams to be on a roster that already, you have two number one wide receivers already, and there is a chance that with their other top ten pick, the Chicago Bears are in the market for another wide receiver. That's been floated a decent amount. We'll see if that actually happens. But either situation, uh, now that you have DJ Moore and Keenan, like and and the Chicago Bears, if you remember over last year, they, they were getting better over the second half of the season. So it's I'm very interested uh, in Caleb Williams because he has the guys, you know, the rushing production. It's not that he can't he can't move, but it's that's not like his his calling card uh, by any means. This isn't Jaden Daniels, the next guy we'll highlight. So you're not really Looking at that, where it, it, last last week we had a show I brought up about the top twelve best fantasy seasons. the The majority of them guys are doing things with their legs, but if Caleb Williams really has these weapons at his possession, I think he will be a very interesting quarterback, not only for dynasty but for redraft to, to just take a shot late and see if he has that Stroud magic. Yeah, I, he's good. There's a reason he's going to be the number one pick. And and if you go back over the last decade, and we, you know, there's always oh, this is the best player since Andrew Luck. This is the best player since Trevor Lawrence. This, is, you know, there's always that that dominant one every few years. And I know we weren't quite as. I mean, Trevor Lawrence had all the 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 you know the uh, traits, right? But he wasn't one of those guys we fawned over. To me, Caleb Williams is worthy of that hype. Like when I watch, I'm like, this guy can do some special things that 
not many other people can do. Uh, the the numbers were down a little bit this last year, but he also played two fewer games. So it, on a per game basis, still down a little bit, but it, he had a good season. And when I watched the film, I'm like, yeah, I totally get it. There's this is a good quarterback draft class, and he is in a tier of his own. Kyler finished his rookie year at seven, Herbert at nine, Stroud at eleven. Those are kind of the highlight rookies of right. the last uh, four years. If you had to put Caleb Williams into a a box right now is it 15 is yeah it that's 12 about, to 15 I, yeah. I would I would say more like 15 to 18 if you're talking just 2024 fantasy finish Mike's right he's not a you like we're going to talk about Jaden Daniels whose legs are a, a calling card Caleb Williams can scramble there's a lot of you know people are saying oh he, his comp is like Patrick Mahomes and I get why that there, there is only one Patrick Mahomes who I think is probably going to end as the greatest quarterback of all time by the end of his career but you see some of those like you know the creativity the scrambling the buying time and then having a rocket arm to do stuff but he's got the same mobility to me that Mahomes has which is in all of his full seasons he averages 321 rushing yards a game it, and that, and I think I mean <laughs> <laughs> wow, 320 <laughs> rushing yards a game. On average? On average, 320 yards, which boosts his numbers. No, Just a little 321 bit. a year. Yeah, and I think that that's kind of around what I will project for Caleb Williams. He's, you know, he had 382 in his sophomore year, and they do count sacks against you in college. So I, I think Caleb Williams will not be a pure pocket passer that's, you know, scrambling for right, 50 yep. yards a year. All right, we're going to take a quick break and come back with a discussion on Jaden Daniels. All right, as we maintain our run through the quarterback previews here, Jaden Daniels from LSU via ASU uh, was a senior. Took him a while to get going and have that opportunity. The transfer made a big difference. He was uh, he was outstanding. Forty touchdowns. He's a super four. Interception. Super duper senior. He's a five year player. Yeah, he he's been there for a long time. He's twenty three years old. And uh, you know, dual threat to me, still the weight concerns me tremendously for the types of things he wants to try to do with his legs. I, I do worry about injury with him. Um he also evolved his you know, I watched him a lot at ASU, but that last year at LSU was a very different story. Yeah, you were before really watching the tape on the uh, on him. I as thought an I LSU knew. Senior, I thought I knew enough about it. Yeah, you were like out on Jaden Daniels because you watched a couple years at ASU, and you're like, this dude's not it. That's right. Yeah, I mean, just not a player you see transferring into the NFL game and having consistent success. He definitely profiled to me as a backup NFL quarterback, um, but he had an incredible year and it was well deserving of the Heisman. And everything he did at LSU, everything he did that final year was super impressive. Fantasy football wise, this is a star prospect because you're you're talking about thirty eight hundred passing yards with forty passing touchdowns. If that's all you do, that's incredible. You're a high draft pick. He added eleven hundred rushing yards and ten rushing touchdowns. He is outstanding on the ground. He's a lot faster than I guess players around him think because he's always he's always beating the first and second guys, getting out into open space, and then getting yes, clobbered. But he, getting clobbered out the open. He is not as strong as he thinks that. He no, is. dude, this guy's going to be the first decapitated <laughs> NFL player because he gets to the outside, beats a man, cuts, and and just you think he's gone to the house, and then it's always he doesn't see the safety or or someone that just comes up blow him up I've never seen someone take such such blind downfield hits as Jaden Daniels yeah he, that is a concern it, it is definitely a concern that he will have to work on the other concern is he is already over the age of 23 you would prefer that your franchise quarterbacks had some dominance at a, at a younger age again a five-year player and the the jump it's his 2022 season statistically for LSU it's not like it's a it's not an awful season 
But 2,900 yards, 17 passing touchdowns, almost 900 uh, yards on the ground. It's just wild because Burrow did the same thing at L and, LSU, made the jump in one year. To go from that to the numbers for the next year are – I mean, it's it's how do you want to look at life? This is a how much water is in the glass because it is this just completely fluky that he had a magical season. He's got you know some uh, he's got some weapons. He's got a, a wide receiver that is almost certainly uh, a top what six pick or so. Malik Neighbors, yeah, Brian Malik Thomas, Neighbors, Jr. and then the other wide receiver he had. It's very Joe Burrow esque because because Brian Thomas by all the the smoke of the NFL draft community, he will be a first round wide receiver. So that those are the I mean look the red alarms if you want to be concerned about Jay. Here's what's crazy to me is that he profiles to me and statistically what he did in college, being a senior, his size, his stats, and maybe the team he's drafted by. But Robert Griffin the third is a yeah. very similar situation mm -hmm. with what he did. RG three jumped in his senior year to a huge touchdown total. He only ran for like 700 yards. I mean, this was a bigger year for Jaden Daniels, and he went number two to Washington. Yeah, and RG3, I still think, would have had a great career. He was on his way to being a superstar NFL quarterback before being injured out of the league. Over and over yeah. again. Yeah. And and this, honestly, it seems like a that, that could be a comp here. So that's that, that is a, that's that is a fear for Jaden Daniels. But I do think that when he's on the field, I would bet on him over everyone else in this draft draft class to score the most fantasy points while he's on the field. There you go. But also, very, um, you know, we've seen it with Justin Fields. He scores a lot of fantasy points when he's on the field, but then the NFL's like, yeah, but you don't win enough games. Get off the field. Yeah. Get, get off the field. I don't know that I look at Jaden Daniels as a guaranteed prospect, but when he's on the field, he'll score a lot of fantasy points. Drake May. What were your impressions watching Drake May film three years at North Carolina? Uh, really two. I mean, really a sophomore. Yep. Um, were you impressed? He is, I think, a fascinating prospect because I mean he's he's still young, uh, essentially two years as a starter in college, and he does something. He he has incredible moments where. He had like physically, he is very gifted. Like he, he has a rocket ship for an arm. He can move around. Like Drake May won't give you Jaden Daniels numbers on the ground, but but Drake May is willing to run. Uh, almost 700 rushing yards in that first year as a true starter. About 450 this past year in two fewer games. So he has he he'll give you you know just a little bit of a of a cushion with uh, some rushing points, but then he follows up. Like Daniel Great. Jones, he he follows up. Uh, yeah, yeah, Daniel Jones. Is that sure, fair? for the for the amount of rushing you would expect, where you'll just you'll be, he'll give you nothing, and then the next game all of a sudden you'll have oh I got sixty rushing yards from Drake May. That's interesting, but he'll follow up greatness with real head scratching decisions. So he is still a he is a prospect who who needs to have a uh, a stable coaching staff around who who can get the best out of him because if he goes. Like if if he's just surrounded by a bad situation, I think that his odds are are failing. But he his ceiling is that if it if it all works out, he could be incredible. Jason, he was a lot like Caleb Williams in the respect that last year, thirty eight touchdowns, seven interceptions. The numbers came down a little on two fewer games, um, so the per game came down a little. Uh, what about you? Uh, so I think Drake May is a great prospect. Um, if I was a if I was a GM, I'd be all about him. Uh, he is the prototypical. You know, you're you're not afraid of size here. Yep. Six four two twenty three. He's a big, athletic quarterback. You can use him on all the scrambles. You could try to tush push with him. Uh, you know, this is a guy who had nine rushing touchdowns last year. He is that more Josh Allen than he, Daniel Jones? Then I I think it is closer there, but that it's kind of between those two guys. He's like if you if you took Daniel those two, Allen, if you took those two guys and put them together, that's kind of my expectation for where Drake May comes out, which is very good for fantasy. He's going to have enough rushing yardage and enough rushing touchdowns down near the goal line that he will be very fantasy relevant. The question is whether he can be consistent with his throw. You know, you see some like Mike said some head scratching plays but he's also very young he's 21 years old right now 
Um, and that's really good. The old quarterbacks, uh, Kyle isn't with us today. If he was here, <laughs> he would want us to rant on how unsuccessful old quarterbacks being drafted are. And there are three of them here we're talking about that are pretty old, being in 23. I'm just I'm wondering if him not being with us sounded like maybe he had passed on. He's just not here today. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I think, you know, one interesting fact, May led all quarterbacks in uh, throws between the hashes in terms of PFF grade. Um, like you said, big arm, competitor. J.J. McCarthy, the last of the Fab Four, I would say, uh, being talked about at the very top of the draft. National champion at Michigan in his junior season. The numbers weren't you know, prolific or out of this world, but he executed an NFL-style offense and led them to a championship. Um, very young breakout age, still very young, 21 years old. Uh, he's a winner. Yeah, he, he's he's also just a very accurate passer. Yeah. I think, Mike, you mentioned Brock Purdy's name earlier. Well, I just – he we, – we were – Technically sound. Because J.J. McCarthy has really been – rising at least in the terms of the, the court of public opinion jj mccarthy has gone from essentially like early on in the process this is a solid second round pick and then he oh don't be surprised if jj mccarthy sneaks into the first round and now it's there's a lot of smoke jj mccarthy a number two overall and it's like whoa <laughs> okay we've gone from the second round to the number two overall pick but watching jj mccarthy I I think he's good. The numbers Andy was talking about, they aren't prolific. You have just under 3,000 passing yards, 22 passing touchdowns. But We know how they ran the football there. But that exactly. Compared to Drake May, he threw the ball 100 fewer times in three more games. Yeah, that's wild. So he didn't the, – the offense was so different. It ran on the ground. It was very high T up there for, uh, for Harbaugh. I think McCarthy's – good like I I think if you have I don't know that he is a like a, a a franchise changing player where you you can put him in and then everything builds around him but if you're missing a QB like if if JJ McCarthy went to Minnesota I think that would be an incredible move Minnesota at 11 Denver at 12 at 12 Bears Commanders Patriots all in the mix Giants could be in the mix when you think of those first four names and destinations, like how impactful is that going to be for you? Because these are all teams that lost a lot of football games. You know, how much better do you think Washington is than New England? Or how much better do you think the Giants situation might be than, I don't know, Denver or something or, or vice versa? Yeah, I mean, when you look at Denver and New England, those uh, are scarier landing spots, I think, from like a weapons even perspective. With, even with Peyton, though? Peyton is nice um, to to just have like confidence that you've got a good coach, but as far as like twenty twenty four, you know, rookie year value, it's going to be really hard for me to see fantasy relevance uh, with those receivers if someone like JJ McCarthy goes there because JJ McCarthy he's athletic, he's very good at throwing on the run, uh, but he's not using his athleticism to get downfield, get a bunch of rushing yardage and a ton of rushing touchdowns in the NFL. I, I don't see that as his path towards fantasy points so it really will be being a prolific pocket passer getting Ooh, great P. getting great wide receivers involved and 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 yeah so if he goes to Minnesota and has Justin Jefferson and Addison and eventually Hawk that that's a perfect landing spot for him and um Jay you know you look at Jim Harbaugh Jim Harbaugh it's just shocking he says great things about this quarterback <laughs> Jim Harbaugh sitting at, at pick number five says this is the best quarterback I've ever seen. Trade Herbert, you coward. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, I, was I mean, say. the the fact that he I mean he he, he believes it. I think he does. I think but he's he got his quarterback it, but already. It, it behooves him so much to say that. It's like it's like yeah, insider the trading picking at number five. Yeah, picking at number five being like, hey guys, guys, you gotta you gotta take him at four. I mean, we the, can't, but we, you we'll you trade gotta. back. We'll trade back. <laughs> if he's there at five, you gotta come get this guy. Can't it's imagine. Fair. That's fair. Um, I, I want to move on to running backs. I think we've handled the the four most likely to be relevant as a rookie situations. Um, Michael Penix Jr., Bo Nix, other rumored uh, late first, uh, second, third type of guys. 
Uh, both of them are older. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's comical, right? 23 years old. Uh, you're old. 24. Bo Nix is 24. Penix will be 24 in a minute. No, no. it'll be at a normal amount of time <laughs> but between birthdays. But um, but he, he has played 47 years in college. Yes, yes. The the these these this year is where you get the weird red shirt year, the COVID year, and you you get a few older guys. Penix tested really well at his pro day. He I doesn't that, run. He throws a rocket yeah, ball. It's so Why weird that he, he run? doesn't run. He ran a Why blazing run when you could, forty time. When you could throw like a missile. Yeah, but because you're left handed and, and you because, look dumb when you throw it, so run. Jason oh has God, admitted guy. that he has a weird bias against lefties. They never look like good quarterbacks. I don't know. To me. You you write left-handed. I and I throw right-handed because I have self-respect. <laughs> okay, I am left-handed, and I would never ever Did throw the ball. Did you start throwing lefty, and then you're? And like, I was like, this I, is stupid. What am I doing? Give me that ball back. You saw a video of him throwing. Yeah. He was ashamed of himself, and he. So you, I mean, you hated. What Steve Young? Oh, the worst. Boomer Esiason, Michael Vick stunk. I mean, he, at least he ran. You know, it's right. like, oh, good. If you if you throw a left, you just run instead of throw. Yeah. Um, but no, I want to I, I want to mention Michael Penix Jr. for a moment. Just you know, huge numbers for two consecutive yes. years: thirty plus touchdowns, uh, eight interceptions, uh, eleven interceptions this past year. Uh, has had impressive stretches. Has a very NFL capable arm. If you ended up in the, you know, really good situation, it could work out. But I want to talk about running backs now. How about yeah. that? All right. Me too. Uh, let's talk about – now, what order? Do you guys know what order they put them in? I believe the be- our consider- – Is this the betting order? No, this, no, is, this is, the, is our rankings. This is the correct order. <laughs> okay. The correct order as in we – Well, when you combine, the, first, the first one is the correct one. When you combine all I'll of our that. rankings, then – Yes, our Ballers Consensus Dynasty Rookie Rankings, uh, this is the order in which we have them ranked. Well, Not necessarily. We we don't agree with each other, right? Uh, at the table, but our consensus combined. So when you look at that, the first name that we discuss is Trey Benson, Florida State, Junior. The first two guys we're discussing have dealt with catastrophic injuries. Yes, Trey uh, Trey Benson uh, is the first player. He had a really really bad knee injury that they thought might have been career. Uh, canceling in 2020 is ACL, MCL, lateral meniscus, medial meniscus, and a tendon in his hamstring all at once. Goodness gracious. Um, the fact that he came back from that and looked so great and had such speed and explosiveness, this is my favorite running back of this year's draft class. This is not a great draft class in general. There isn't a Bijan. There isn't a Brees. Um, but Trey Benson, when I watch the film, I'm like, this guy's good. He does all the things that I want to see a player do. He, he caught the ball well. He could get to the outside, um, and and whenever he was in a one-on-one situation, he would always win that one-on-one. Uh, not the best vision, but I think he's the most talented running back of the group. Well, it's debatable between him and the next guy, but the next guy is dealing with a more common or recent injury. Yeah, more recent. I, I, Benson, to me, I'm the lowest of the three of us on Trey Benson. I think – a lot of what you see on film is outstanding. He's a violent runner. Um, he's he's you know got good size. Um, I I just think it's going to come down to what kind of draft draft capital the running back crew as a whole receive, and do they land in one of those perfect destinations? Dallas is the one that sticks out as the most obvious, uh, and so I'm going to. I think we're going to see the running back evaluation swing the most because yes. of how you know there isn't a consensus i have seen five running backs projected as the first off the board at least and so there's a, a wide variety of opinion from benson to brooks to um we've seen braylon allen there we've seen jalen Wright there we've seen blake corum there and so i am going to be paying close to like it feels like a cop out in the evaluation process but I don't feel like one of these guys stood out to the degree that I'm going to ignore the destination or not make that the preeminent aspect of my of my you know scouting yeah, process. Yeah, the, co- the combination of destination and draft capital will reorganize our running. The running back rankings are going to be sadly very easy this year. You know, it's like if if high draft capital is spent by the Cowboys or the Chargers and and all of a sudden you end up with one of I don't even care who it is, one of these top 4 or 5 names 
being the first or second running back off the board to one of those two teams, well, I'm taking them. Let me let me add this too. Like every single year you have rookie running backs make an impact for fantasy. So I want to say that out of the gate. Don't to me, and, and correct me if you have a totally different opinion, but I'm going to be looking at that destination aspect a lot more than the draft capital aspect. If it's a middle of the second versus a middle of the third, but that middle of the third is in a much better destination because of how they compare to one another in their in the film, I'm taking that middle of the third guy with the better destination. Draft capital to me when I look at running backs and and we've done so much research and all the nerd spreadsheets to to verify this. Nerd sheets. It's nerd <laughs> sheets. Um it's really a day two versus a day three pick. It the 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 second and third round it doesn't make that big a difference. The difference between a third round pick and a fourth round pick is monumental. I mean it's like the the fourth round hits from then on out the draft capital, the team is not as invested. They're willing to move on. Even if you had a great rookie year, a la Damian Pierce, uh, when you spend that that on that second day of the NFL draft, those are high valued picks within the minds of the general managers and the NFL franchises. That day really, really, really matters to them, and they're not going to waste this. If they're investing one of those picks, they're saying this is a a, a cornerstone of our offense. So yeah, I, I would agree with you. Third round is super valuable. It's that it's that day two. I'll just jump in real quick uh, because I love Trey Benson. I thought he was absolutely sensational on film. Just I gave him glowing positive grades for basically everything that I'm looking for in, in a running back. He like even when he's getting tackled. It's still pulling the tackler forward, you know, getting an extra yard, an extra two yards, which will matter in, in terms of getting playing time. And I mean, he just he looked so incredibly fast. And then at the combine, he ran a four three nine. Oh, yes, which, yes, baby. Yeah, which at six foot two sixteen puts him in the uh, <sighs> his speed score is a ninety six or ninety fourth, sorry, ninety fourth percentile. So he is very capable. His weight is right in that perfect range where you can take the three down work if you are so fortunate to get a coach who believes in that but he's not so heavy where you're like well uh, you have to be Derrick Henry because you're just so heavy uh, he's right in that sweet spot and I think he can do everything and and to me just film grade wise he was by far the best of, of all these prospects two of the teams that you're looking at with the and we have opportunity charts in the dynasty pass. Dallas and Las Vegas, who tried desperately to keep Josh Jacobs, they couldn't. Uh, they did sign Madison. They have Zamir White. Dallas is at 56 and 87. That's their two picks in the second and third round. Uh, Las Vegas is at 44 and 77. So I think they're going to get the first crack unless Dallas Chargers? moves up. I would love to know there because that's another destination to me where you know they want to run the ball. Yeah. And if they do trade back from five, which they – They're at 37 in the second round, so fifth pick of the second and fifth pick of the third. So they have their normal Oof. picks. They also have the fifth pick in the fourth, and they have the uh, five picks after that in the fourth. So they have two fourths. So they have plenty of capital. I think Trey Benson goes in the second. That's, yeah. That, that'll be my As projection. of right now, I, I, I looked up the, uh, you know, who's most likely to be the – First running back taken. Uh, it, right now, the odds are towards Jonathan Brooks, just barely ahead of Trey Benson. All right, another break, and we'll come back and talk about Jonathan Brooks from Texas. Live from Texas, let's talk oh, about Jonathan I, Brooks. Because I said from Texas. Yeah, we're going to talk about Jonathan Brooks from Texas. We don't Texas. do really any, not too many like on site type of situations. Can we send you as our a correspondent? Yes, please. I would love to do shows uh, in Texas. Shows in Texas from a camera crew, just holding the microphone. Go out there and touch some All grass. All your exes, actually. They live in Texas. Uh, Jonathan Brooks. Bust. Yeah, Bust please. It. Yeah, I knew it was bad. <laughs> I'm 40. Uh, Jonathan Brooks. Jason mentioned it. Recent injury, expected to be ready for the the regular season, but dealing with an ACL. Um, I think some view that as a risky situation. I don't really um it's a patient situation you might have to be more patient but patience and risk are not the same thing to me uh he's only 20 years old to me he well, he's 20 to everyone 
<laughs> wow, Jay, you are cook. Let him cook. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> Man, I he, earlier he had said when he he said uh, well, we were talking about Benson and he went Florida Junior. I almost jumped in with a Florida senior joke, but I, I'm surprised you didn't catch that one. Yeah, I should have. Well, I'm he's sorry. picking his spots. Jonathan Brooks is 20 to everybody. Correct. Um, he redshirted in 2021. He was behind Bijan in yeah, Texas. Yeah, couldn't get on the field last year. What's that about? Yeah, Bijan's all right. And um, I thought he was – I think he's a very smooth runner. I think he's a runner that, uh, to me, has a higher ceiling, I think, if he's given the opportunity – um, you can catch the football, uh, but you just have to be more patient. And so I do think fantasy players will be staring down a more difficult decision in rookie drafts if you have like Jonathan Brooks going ahead of Benson, but then Benson's – they're both in a good situation and you don't know maybe whether Jonathan Brooks will be given a big workload early in his career. Yeah, I, I um, when I first watched Jonathan Brooks, I had him ranked much lower within my rookie rankings because my presumption was an NFL team cannot really invest high draft capital into a player that's not going to be ready at the running back position. And so I thought he would plummet down the actual draft board. And if he ends up a fourth rounder, um, you know, the, the, the career opportunities can change. But given the the buzz and, you know, right now I just said the the, the sports book line is he has the highest odds of being they're, the number they're one? Even. Oh, the they're even. They're even right shared. now. Yeah. DK has got them both at plus two hundred. But that's still. I mean, so he's tied for first. And if he if he's the first or second running back off the board, I'm going to be fully in on him because every single play, every single play was positive for him. It wasn't like he had the unbelievable stuff that Bijan and Brees had, where it was like, wow, you, any play could be the end of the the drive. Um, I don't see that quite the same in him, but everything is positive. Let the, me let me give you a pretend. Glides. Yeah, he does. And let me give you a pretend situation. At seventy seven in the third round, first running back off the board, uh, Trey Benson goes to the Las Vegas Raiders. At eighty seven off the board, the second running back, Jonathan Brooks, goes off the board to the Dallas Cowboys. How do you how would you evaluate that for rookie drafts? I would still have Trey Benson ahead. I, I, I think Trey Benson is a better running back than Jonathan Brooks. I like both of them, but um, the opportunities are both good. If it, they're, they're almost for sure will not be a running back in the first round, but if there's no running back draft in the second round, whew. I've seen piles of mock drafts with no running backs in the first and second round. Yeah, I will just be and, surprised if it happens on well, the actual Here's the day. problem is the teams that need the running backs the most, Dallas, Los Angeles, and – um, what about Vegas? Vegas, like, are you going like? Los Angeles is very high in the second round. Yeah, they're not picking a, a running back until the third round. There's a there's a good chance though on draft day they trade back from five and they end up with a, a different smattering answer. of yeah other yeah. Picks, I mean those so. things. I mean we can't predict that, but I'm just saying like if the greatest opportunities are top heavy in the second round, sure, I see and nobody's saying. off the board. Like, why not kick that back to the third round? I'll be very curious to see what happens. Um. Braylon Allen, Blake Corum. Talk about these two guys. Corum is, uh, let, let's call him the J.J. McCarthy of the <laughs> running back position. He really is. You're because just saying because he's so boring. I'm. Well, I know you call him Blake Borum. I've heard <laughs> yeah, about this. Yeah, and Blake Corum. More like Blake Borum. You're, you're, you're more um, allured by a rhyme, maybe. But here, here's what I mean is the numbers weren't prolific for J.J. McCarthy. In Michigan, national title. Uh, he's a he's a very accurate, efficient passer. Blake Corum's like measurables are not everything that fits into the normal prototypical. They're, they're fine. The range, but the consensus opinion on Blake Corum is greater than the analytical opinion on Blake Corum, and the consensus opinion on JJ McCarthy among general managers is much different than the analytical opinion of JJ McCarthy. To to me, both of these guys proved that they were the most technical at their position. I think Blake Corum is the most refined at his position of all the running backs. I think he does the most stuff well, but he doesn't have the highest ceiling. He doesn't have the highest top speed. He, he doesn't have one thing that he does better than everybody else, but I think he does everything pretty darn well. Yeah, he's your number one running back. He could very easily be the number one running back taken in the NFL draft. He obviously won a national championship, and 
if you look at the production profile, he's very, very good. Um, you know, he, he, you might want to see him catch the ball a little bit more. But one of the most sticky college stats at the running back position to predict future success, because, you know, we nerd out on anything we can, is surprisingly rushing touchdowns. That's always been something that's actually been a very sticky stat for success. He only, well, had, don't, he only had 27. You don't do much better than Blake Corum. 27 rushing touchdowns this last year, 18 the year before. It's 45 so, touchdowns. I mean, the, the, I, I watched the film and I saw absolutely nothing special. Never anything wrong. I didn't watch it go, this guy sucks. Oh, this guy's bad. I just, I just was waiting for something special. And then he scores a touchdown. <laughs> it was like, okay, well, but he didn't do anything special to cause that. Let's see the next drive. And then it was like, oh, this is okay. He's okay. He's okay. He got another touchdown. He just, he gets it done. So I'm really confused with him. Um, he obviously is very, very productive. Um, I don't love him personally. There's a lot of flags. He's older. He's 5'8", he's small. 205. Uh, since 1999, only seven running backs 5'8 or shorter drafted in the first three rounds that's mjd that's a smash hall of famer but he was what like four three something speed he was four, four, four. foot three inches tall <laughs> that yes. is correct um he, he had electric speed you got clyde edwards Alaire, mm -hmm. failure devin yep. singletary mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, daryl henderson lamichael james garrett wolf and kevin folk you talk about giant starter devin singletary man yeah yeah I, he, he's okay yeah. devin not a, i not guess that makes his team kind of like an ironic landing spot Oh, I see. You know I what I mean? I see. He's, Andy's just I'm throwing at a him out right I'm at a now. different level. <laughs> he's, he's still trying to recover from his ex's I don't joke. think Jason understands this, though. I still know that He's on see, the Giants, listen, He's Jason? on the Giants, uh, and he's very short. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Okay. All right. I'm there. Some would um, say he's not Mike, a Mike, I don't have that button on my board. You want, you want that, no, 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 no. That's a good joke. It's a smart person joke. That's why you didn't like it. Uh, Braylon <laughs> Allen. <laughs> Three years younger, Jason. Talk about Braylon Allen. He's a baby boy compared to Blake Corum he, and Mike. You as well. I'll, he, I'll jump in because yeah, I he, I like Braylon Allen. He it it is a little bit nerve wracking to have you know he's six one two thirty five. So this is a this is a tank of a man. This is the guy where you see f photographs of him from high school, and he's the strongest man you've ever seen. And that was years and years and years ago. And his his production profile is pretty awesome. In 2021, as a freshman, over almost 1,300 rushing yards at 6.8 a carry, 12 rushing touchdowns, and some receiving work. But over the course of, of his career, you saw the receiving production go up. So we like that. He's not – I wouldn't call him the, the world's most natural pass catcher, but good enough. That that he can he he can be utilized in that. Uh, I want to see the world's most unnatural pass catcher. Uh, we've that'd be wild. We've seen Jordan Howard. Yeah, we we've seen a lot of those guys. I guess like, I was thinking they'd be doing like like tricks and stuff. But go on. Oh, or like the seal clap yeah, at the just ball. Weird catches. But he just totally unnatural. His his age, like currently, he's barely twenty years old. His breakout age, uh, before he was allowed to vote, uh. So that that is wild. Like the dominator rating, everything is there for him. So I I I think he hit the ceiling. If everything works, will be like a true difference making running back for fantasy football. But he, while I acknowledge that the ceiling is there, I acknowledge that this could be AJ Dillon all over again. Yeah, he. I think that's a decent a decent mid level comp um, for him as AJ Dillon because. He's got really good hands, but he just doesn't turn. And after he catches the ball and right. and go fast, it's like he has to stop and start again. Uh, his production was great as a baby boy. I mean, he went into the league like you said, couldn't even vote yet, and he put up twelve hundred and sixty-eight yards. I, unless there's an injury or a specific reason to watch older tape, I always watch the most recent season. That's the one that they're coming off of after teams have figured out who's a star, who's not, and. Um, he wasn't as good this last year, 984 yards in 11 games. His, he is one of the only guys like this though. So I think it, yeah. he, you know, he's six one two thirty five. If an NFL team is saying, I want a real big, massive man, they might, they might invest higher in Braylon Allen than, than maybe the sports book think 
So where he lands will be really important to me. But he's going to be the youngest. He graduated high school a year early. I believe he's like the only example we will have of you someone got my joke. playing the entire um, rookie season before turning 21. That's insanely young. I it's going to be really interesting and just to be clear like the you guys both have Benson number 1 Jason has Brooks number 2 and Allen number 3 Mike has Allen number 2 and Brooks number 3 I currently uh have Corum at 1 uh and then I have Brooks at 2 Benson at 3 and Allen at 4 I don't think there are five spots to make a rookie impact this year in terms of NFL teams they've invested heavily on free agent running backs this year. I think there are situations that are sneaky. Cincinnati, a rookie could arrive in Cincinnati, yeah. and you've got Zach Moss, right? And so yes. those ones could evolve. But there aren't – there are some, like, bad destinations, and then there are just, like, not a lot of teams with a full workload. So if you end up with, let's say, one in the second, okay? Mm -hmm. One in the second, two in the third, the rest are going on – on day three or later, that's where it gets a little bit hairy to me in terms of being of having any confidence. Because look, we can sit here and say, "Hey, we, we're going to pay attention to the destination," but if you got a fifth round Braylon Allen, that's going to be a tough. Oh, of course, you know what I mean, or a fourth, yeah. or even a fourth round Braylon Allen going to a team that's already got an established running game. Yeah, he'll be. Those will be. He'll be just irrelevant to me until we hit the back of the second third round and he probably won't be there those are the type of um rookie draft picks running backs that are drafted on day three that are overdrafted in your rookie drafts because oh i need a running back i just have to have one and i like this guy before the nfl draft so they're going to draft him too high don't do that that's a waste to pick we have to talk about Jalen Wright out of Tennessee because he's also been projected in some mock drafts as the first running back off the board I have him at five, Jason at five, Mike at six right now. Um, this was a this is a player that I when finally putting him on, putting on the film, like he was ignored for quite a while, mm -hmm. and then a lot of buzz began. And um, he he was number one in yards per carry of the entire running back class. And if you watch him, this is a player with electric speed. He's a game breaker type of player, and um, you know he's sub four four. He was constantly, when he gets behind the defense, is like goodbye. And so there, there's something attractive about that, I think, um, for some of these teams with holes at the running back position to bring somebody in that can catch the football, that can break a big play, um, but just doesn't have the production profile of the other guys that we've already talked about. Yeah, it, it's honestly, <clears throat> it's almost a, you know, there's cheat codes for rushing quarterbacks. I feel like one of the cheat codes for, projecting rookie running backs is when there is a guy that is 210 pounds or more and runs sub 4-4 four four, pretty much always works I mean it, 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 they they find a landing spot and they have some success for some period of time I mean uh, Deonta Foreman I think you know uh, Achilles uh, out of that but like even uh, you know Pacheco was close to that when you're really really fast but also really really heavy it's hard um, to stop those guys, and, and NFL offensive minds, they just get those guys a crease, get them in space, and they succeed. So I, I'm really interested where he's going to go because as soon as he ran that speed at that size, I was like, yeah, 4'3", 210 pounds, that he, just works. Yeah, and he was he was number two overall in terms of the combine rank at running back in, in athleticism. So he kind of jumped off the page and I think changed a lot of teams' minds. Mike, what did you think of Jalen Wright? Could he be a surprise this he, season? I mean, I I feel like I don't have a full read on Jalen Wright because he it not that the, the actual like professional scouts, but you know, just in the the on Twitter essentially, you know, draft Twitter when we're all starting to get really excited about these guys as 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 the NFL season has ended, now we're moving towards the draft. He was just he was a, a late comer to the party where you're like, how is how did it go from no one is really but not no one of course I get it they're going I have receipts I talked about Jalen Wright fantastic <laughs> <laughs> but like the overall crowd wasn't really talking about Jalen Wright and but now people are really buzzing about him that's that can be a red flag it, it's not a reason to write somebody off but it's a it's just it's something that's interesting of 
he wasn't at the top of mind of people, and and now he is climbing in there. You definitely climb in there when you have a a uh, a combine like this. It reminds me of uh, David Johnson when yep it was like who who is this guy from the small school that just destroyed every athletic measurable at the combine? And while it was short, there was that season for David Johnson where he was like he won people championships. I like the fact that at least the receiving profile has gone up where in that final year of, of college, you know, he accounted for uh, 9% of the receptions, which is, it's a, that's a little bit under the mark that you want from a true running back one, but it, it, at least it started to get up there because if you are, if you're that size and you can catch, I will be interested. I, I'll say this. I think Jalen Wright will go in the third round okay. of the NFL draft. That That's a little draft prediction. I think he's going to go there. I think somebody's going to fall in love with what the combine showed and that breakaway speed. We'll see. I want one more name from the remaining crop of running backs that you're paying attention to. Uh, Will Shipley. I like Will Shipley. I do too. And Not at least Clemson. I think he's a player that could land on a team and con and contribute from day one. Not as the guy, but as a compliment, as a pass catcher, and you know. I have him at six right now. You guys both have him at seven. Is there another name you really like? Yeah, there's there's a guy I like. Um, and to speak on Will Shipley, I mean, he, he I think he's very well-rounded. He came into college as, I mean, there's different high school scouting reports, but some had him as the number one running back recruit um, in the nation. So he's not out of nowhere. Pay, pay attention to him. Uh, but for me, Ray Davis, he's older, which I don't like. I really, you know, I don't like older running backs. 24.4. Yeah, I mean, that is... That's a very wow, old, man. But, That's Papa Josh level. <laughs> but he is extremely well rounded. Um, he can catch the ball well. He's got breakaway speed. Uh, I liked the tape a lot, and from a fantasy perspective, I really liked that he seems like he can do everything, and I I value that in a running back. Mike, did you have anybody else you want uh, to bring up? It, it Estime out of Notre Dame, and it's I just wanted you have him I, the highest. Yeah, I I I think he's in. I like what I saw, and the 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 buzz, you know, with mock drafts is showing. He could be one of those guys that ends up as a third rounder. He's fun because Jason and I have a pretty strong difference of opinion on him. He he is a thicker boy, you know. He's thick. Yeah, he's <laughs> he's thick. I and, think Jason and I have the same opinion. So you're you're yeah. on an estimate island. <laughs> that's which that's that's fine, but he's big island. It's, it's a it's a big island, and it's. He's a big player, a big running back who can catch, and I just I have a soft re spot. I real soft spot when there's when, when you can give me that kind of combination. He was uh, he's still running his forty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the official combine was four seven one. Oh, which, why even do it? Uh, I so, know, but his, well, he improved it at the pro day, right? I don't I don't recall if four seven zero. But he, at the pro day, so slow straight line, but. Like his other, I think it was four five eight or something. Four five eight, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So add on the point zero five, and you're still slow. You're still <laughs> slow. <laughs> so but like his explosiveness and the vert, like the the short area speed, he he tested very well at that. And I kind of I had the notes. Oh, of, is he your next AJ Dillon? Uh, maybe I don't know. I I thought his footwork was pretty good for a good guy or for a big guy. And the the problem I have is the start and stopping. I don't know if you're going to be able to get away with that when you go to the pros. It was working for you in college, but he he's a guy I have, I have my eye on just just in case his draft name gets called on day two. All right, uh, kind of a unique, different year for running backs, really, for the uh, you know so much attention on the wide receiver position, which we will be covering on Thursday with more highbrow jokes from yours truly. And then more of kind of like the, wow, the, the, the on the street stuff from Jason. Yeah, come to the streets, join me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that'll do it. Again, you can deep dive in the Dynasty Pass, ultimatedraftkit.com. Back with another show on Thursday. Take care. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.